Hi, and welcome to the show. My name is Zlatko Grozel, and I'm the Instructional Technologist for the Humanities Division here at Colgate. And today we're going to spend a few minutes discussing different iPad apps uh, that we found particularly interesting for your use. I'm joined by my colleague, Ahmad Kazai. Hi, how you doing? I'm the Instructional Technologist for the Social Sciences and University Studies Division. So the format of today, we're just going to try and cover a couple topics. We're going to take about a minute for each one. And uh, you might hear a buzzer go off. Don't be alarmed. And uh, yeah, let's have fun with it. So for starters, we're going to talk about idea organization. And for that, we have Poplet. So Poplet is kind of like a mind mapping solution. Uh, and what it does is here you go. It, you can um, start off. You make a bunch of little, um, you can make uh, your own little Poplets or little notes. And um, you have them there. You can link them to another one. <clears throat> and then you can also export them. So this poplet that we have here is just kind of an introduction to what we're going to do today. We're talking about iPads. we got some productivity stuff that we want to show you. Uh, so we're going to talk about Dropbox, note taking, quick office. We're kind of, kind of quickly going to cover all these things. Then we move to this side. We have education. We're going to talk about some uh, e-textbooks. We're going to talk about some language learning stuff. Uh, we have some news readers that we want to show you. So this app lets you send out pictures. You can make a few of them. You can kind of change the colors of them uh, as you like. And so they're very pleasing to the eye. You can have several of them. And that's Poplet in under 60 seconds. Are you ready for it? That's right. Oh, okay. All right. So moving on to the next one. So the next application I want to show you is kind of the Swiss Army knife of applications that I like to use. It's called Dropbox, and it's a free file storage and file synchronization service, uh, which you can um, uh, basically, you get a Dropbox account, you sign up for it for free, and then you can get storage. And uh, as you uh, upload your files through Dropbox, you can actually import them uh, to your iPad. So from any Macintosh or Windows device, you can get your files onto an iPad. So for example, in this case, we have a, we have a PDF file that we put up in the, in, the, in the Dropbox folder. And now I can actually take this file and I can open it through Dropbox in any other um, program, such as iBooks or um, in this case, I'll show you in a little bit the PDF Reader Pro, uh, which is also a fantastic application for annotating documents. But uh, Dropbox <coughs> itself is free. There is also a paid uh, solution that gives you more space. But uh, with the free account, you get about two gigabytes of space, if I'm correct, right? Yes. Um, uh, one thing to kind of highlight about uh, Dropbox is that it's a good way to get files on your iPad without having to plug into something or email them to yourself. You can have, you can have the client. <laughs> All right, there we go. Let's move on to the to the uh, PDF reader while we're here. All right, so uh, while we're in here, we can just uh, continue opening this file up in PDF Reader Pro, which is actually, uh, this Pro version is a paid application. I think it costs about $10 or something like that. And it allows you to basically read very large PDFs and view them in a sort of a uh, library of documents. So here's the document we just imported from Dropbox. I can open this document up and I can, uh, I can zoom in and view it, but uh, what's even more important is that I can actually annotate over this document with different, different, um, different lines, different arrows. I can cross things out. I can make, I can actually insert little stamps. So, for example, if I'm doing a class, if I'm grading, I can actually insert little check boxes next to um, answers. So this is a good annotation software as well as a good piece of uh, PDF reading software. It's uh, comparable to iBooks. And another feature that's really fantastic in, th in this program is that you can actually export, um, I'm sorry, you can actually export your uh, files. And you can, uh, when you do that, you, uh, you can export only certain pages if you wish. So um, the exports are uh, then put into a separate PDF. Oh, oh kinda, good time. Right on time. All right. So next, what we want to show you is a document scanning uh, piece of software. It's called DocScan HD, and essentially what it does, it is right oh. now in a, <laughs> in a, a portrait view. But um, the idea here is that you can take pictures of pieces of paper, and then you can create uh, PDFs. So in this case, we took two pictures of two different uh, classroom instruction sets that we have, and you can open them up, look at them, you can. Uh, you can uh, read them. You can then export this here as a, as a picture because you're doing a single one. Or you can uh, export the entire thing as a PDF. Now, you can also connect to Dropbox, for example. So if you wanted to get this uh, PDF that you uh, just made and share it with your computer or someone else, uh, 
you can just say hit Dropbox. It shares it to Dropbox. Now it's on your computer and any other device that you have connected to Dropbox. This is kind of useful if you're out looking at textbooks. You take a couple pictures. You have a PDF of it. Uh, you can upload it to Google Docs and go ah, from there. Out of time. Yeah. That was very good, though. I, I, All right. I, so the next one that we have uh, is called Quick Office. And Quick Office is kind of like an office suite for your iPad. Now, to show you that, here's Quick Office. And Quick Office, very similar, lets you connect to Dropbox. And so the, that's why Dropbox is very important. There's a lot of, a lot of things connect to Dropbox. What were you going to say, Z? And this is a paid version of Quick Office. I think there's a free version also. No, there's right? no free version. Really? Yes, no. Oh, man, I'm yes. sorry. No, that's all right. <sighs> so Quick Office, it, it provides Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Uh, and you can also uh, hook up to your Google Docs. So here's a couple of our Google Docs. Um, and, you know, it's just a, a quick list of all your documents. Um, here's some notes that I took, for example. So we'll hit that up real quick. And it's, you can kind of see that it's loading. It's downloading them now. Um, and there we go. So here's the notes that we have in Google Docs. If we wanted to edit it, um, there you go. There's the keyboard, and you can edit the document live. Um, also, you know, if you're connecting to Dropbox, uh, you can look at PDFs. Um, you can't annotate them the way you could with uh, PDF Reader, but you can also build uh, PowerPoints right on them and display them, and you get a little laser pointer to go with them. Mm. All right. So next we have up is uh, your language stuff. So uh, let me show you a few applications that I thought were interesting as far as the sort of free and, and also paid language learning applications. The first one that I um, was, um, where, where did that go? Oh, well, let me show you Playco first. Playco is a Chinese dictionary that's actually a free uh, download uh, and uh, allows you to uh, basically also buy additional dictionaries as well as additional features uh, via the in-application in, in purchase. Uh, so uh, when you load Playco, you'll basically see a very standard dictionary where you can search um, either based on, uh, based on uh, regular, you know, American input, or you can use the, the, the opinion or other characters as well as input. So uh, and when I find a word that I'm interested in, I can actually get a full definition of that word, and uh, I can actually get the full definitions in different, different um, styles as well. Uh, and when I go into my, um, so there's a couple of features here. There's the dictionary feature, which is uh, pretty handy, and it's free. Uh, then there is the, it's kind of a built-in reader for different, ah. All right, Duh. move to your next uh, language right. one. The next one that I wanted to show you is called uh, Human Japanese. And in this case, I'll show you the light version, which is the free product. Um, the paid version is about $14, I believe. And what this is, is actually a, um, an entire multimedia um, collection uh, book. Um, which allows you to study Japanese from beginning to uh, fairly advanced uh, levels. The free version gives you uh, eight chapters of the book for free. And, and what's uh, interesting about it is that it allows you to, uh, it, in the middle of the book, uh, in some sections, it actually gives you a pronunciation guide. It actually has a recorded Japanese pronunciation as well as the American pronunciation. So as we go to different chapters here, we can actually see that there are a couple of places here where let me find, so if we, uh, this text, for example, whenever you see this text here, you can actually listen to it. Um, but let me find another. So here's a, here's a, oh, maybe we don't have any vocals. Well, this actually pronounces, um, yeah, it's technically, <laughs> it actually pronounces the words, but um, it teaches you the language. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, all right, see, next on our docket, we have newsreaders. So if you want to take yeah, I over can mention, there. I can mention a few things about the program called Flipboard, which is another free application that um, takes any number of different feeds, from RSS feeds to Twitter feeds to, to Facebook. Uh, and, and, and it creates a magazine, an e-magazine for you. And uh, what's, what's nice about it is that it, ju it just looks beautiful. So it, it comes with some preset magazines already. Um, and this is fantastic for keeping up with the news and keep, keeping up with different. So this is just a, a feed from a news site. Uh, you can actually uh, go in here and you can sign in. You can sign in um, with your Twitter account, with your Facebook account, with Google Reader. And this is what I like to do. I like to sign in with my Google Reader and I have my RSS feeds in my Google Reader and that loads the RSS feeds inside Flipbook and it gives you a nice EPUB style look and feel where you can kind of scroll through the posts as 
as if it was a magazine. Um, and also it comes with a few different preloaded uh, news feeds. News feeds. <laughs> um, we have a counterpart to it that's, since we are a Google shop, um, it's called Current. It's owned by Google and it's the exact same thing. There's a, a few extra things that it can do. So um, the interface is a little bit different, but they work pretty much the same. So in this case here, I have some, some tech feeds that I like to follow. The, the nice thing about this and Flipboard is that if you already follow one of your own magazines, um, and we have spoken with some faculty, and, and they said that their magazines provide RSS feeds, this is a good way to kind of bring that into your iPad. Uh, both Flipboard and uh, Currents, when they're, when they're open and active, um, it's really nice because it will, uh, it will uh, cache everything. So, you know, if you're getting ready to travel, you can kind of load up your magazines, your, your news feeds, and all that other good stuff, and it will, uh, it'll have it there ready for you. So the other thing about Currents that I wanted to point out was that um, Colgate has its own current right now. It's, it's, you know, we're prototyping it, but, you know, it's a good way to follow what's happening at Colgate. So uh, if you're traveling, you want to know what's happening back there, or if, you know, you're an alumni and you want to know what's going on, you can hop on the Colgate University current and kind of see what's going on uh, today. So we're just starting to populate the content there, and uh, there you go. This is also a free application. Also free. Very and cool. the nice thing, too, is that if you have multiple devices, you sign in with your Google account, and whenever you open up on the other one, all your settings move mm. over. That's Kind of like wonderful. Flipboard, once you, once you create that account, right, right. it's ready to go. Right. All right. I think you cheated because you gave yourself extra time. I forgot to hit start. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to, to yeah. note-taking. So here we have, we have three things that we want to show you with note-taking today, and it's just to kind of cover a variety of available apps. So first one is Notes Plus. Um, you create um, a journal. And so you can have as many journals as you want. You can make folders so you can organize them. Now, again, there's a variety of apps. This one lets you write. You can type. Uh, one of the reasons I like this one is because I can highlight stuff, and I can say convert to text. Mm -hmm. Now, once that's, um, once that's there, oops, my text is uh, too small. Can you small. resize it? Yeah, yeah. so we're going to do this one real quick just for you guys to see. And we'll convert that to text. That's great. And there you go. You can also import pictures. So that's the, the, the handwriting that I had there. It lets you uh, convert it to type text. Also, it recognizes shapes. So if you're, um, if you're taking notes in, in a class and you had to draw something, well, there you go. It kind of it makes a nice little vector graphic for you. Then you can draw on that. All right. Moving on to the next one we have. Well, I can mention a few things about this fantastic free application. It's called Dragon by, um, well, by the same people who make Naturally Speaking. Um, and uh, this application is actually a free application that allows you to dictate and it uh, does the transcript, transcription for you. So let's try this live on the air, see if this works. In this case, this is going to be correct. Now, I haven't actually tried it, but if this works. In this case, this is going to be correct. It's fantastic. And what's also nice is that you can, you can start narrating a book, period. Next line. My chapter starts like this. So if I do this, generally it doesn't require any training to start doing this. And you see how so you have the um, period. I have the period here. I have the you new have line. Turn. Yeah. So you can, you can quite literally uh, narrate this book without the need to train the program. Most of the time, uh, what happens is that you need to spend hours training the program to recognize your voice. I did no training. Oh. And it's working pretty good. Yeah, no, actually, and uh, just a quick note on this, you can add multiple notes. Mm -hmm. So you can have you know different chapters, different di at different times. It'll do it for you, mm -hmm. and you can edit it if it wasn't uh, if it wasn't correct. Yeah. One thing I want to mention about this program, also, I know we're out of time, but uh, it requires wireless connection to work. So if you're stuck in an elevator, it's not going to work. I just tried it earlier. If it's a Colgate Library elevator, there is wireless <laughs> in there. Just so you know, we have a movable router that goes up. And, down. <laughs> and the last one uh, is one of our newer ones, um, and we kind of brought this one up because it's. Um, we start the timer. There you go. So it uh, lets you, um, it gives you a little suite of pens. Um, so you have a fountain pen, so you can kind of see how that works. Then you have a little uh, sketch, uh, or like a pencil, so you can do sketching. You have a thick pen. Uh, you, then you have a fine point pen. And of course, you can switch colors between this. Um, and then you have a paintbrush, which kind of acts like a paintbrush would. Mm. 
and you know you can overlap colors. Uh, we thought this was a, an interesting app because you can have um, let's close that up. You can have multiple uh, journals, and so a lot of people use this for note taking. A lot of people use this to sketch ideas. Uh, some of the samples that are um, already included kind of just show you how it's used. This and, is all done by hand. Yeah, this was all done by hand. Just kind of talking about the different. Um, the different types. So this, I mean, if, if you like to write your notes, this is a good way to do it. Looks beautiful too. No, and right. I guess you can export those somehow. And yeah, and so you forth. can email those right out as, yeah. uh, as JPEGs or a whole notebook. Yeah. Um, all right, so, so now we're moving on to Google e Apps. Ebooks. E we got ebook e oh, okay. next. All right, all right. so ebooks is a, a bit of an interesting topic where there's lots of ways to do it. We're going to show you today. Um, iBooks and the Apple iBook store. Uh, so earlier today I uh, loaded this textbook um, and it's called Life on Earth. It's a biology textbook and it's um, one of the reasons that this is kind of a up-and-coming technology is because you can include videos in your uh, in your stuff. So if we look at our table of contents for example, so here we have an intro um, and it starts off with a video. So like the book This is a century in which we've got to solve the great problems and make the great discoveries. I won't make you watch all of it, but um, here's a, a couple sample chapters. If I decide that I want to look at Green Planet, I just hit that real quick, and then here we have uh, Green Planet. And in, in this, you can embed videos as well. So uh, we're kind of looking right now at how you can build your own textbooks, if that's something you're interested in. But if you want to uh, supplement some of your current material, there's math books. <laughs> There's all sorts of books. I'm um, going to mention iBooks author as a secret keyword for yes. that because it's crucial. Um, let me get out of here. I'm now looking at the pictures and I don't want to. All right. So let's go back to the library. So the nice thing about th this is that it can um, you can bring in your PDFs and stuff. So the only other things that we want to tack on to eBooks on the iPad is that you can, if you have a Kindle account, if you have a Kindle or an Amazon account, or if you have a Barnes & Noble account, you can uh, download the Kindle app and the Nook app, and you can access the, the eBooks that you've already purchased on those accounts. So you can kind of have, you have access to several stores with your iPad. So just wanted to throw that out there. Um, and then finally, our last topic is Google Apps. Uh, the, Google has an app for the iPad, and it's a uh, an interesting little app. It provides um, you can you have access to your Google Apps. Let's start our timer. Uh, you can do a voice search and you can do a picture search. So let's start off with a picture search. Um, and yes, it is in this. Uh, it's, it changes the orientation, but we have a history of our searches. Um, and so I am looking at the wrong one. We can you know start if you want to start this one. Goggles. Over. Here we go. All right, and here's the history that I wanted wow. to show you. And so, for example, earlier today I just took a picture of this Dunkin' Donuts cup and it returned um, that it's text and then it's also the logo for Dunkin' Donuts. So the beauty of this is that you can also take a picture of just text, like a sign. It'll notice that it's text and then it'll either search on it if it's a foreign language text. Mm -hmm. It offers a translation for it. So it's very useful in, uh, in that regard. Uh, also, you have access to your Google Docs this way. Um, and again, if you're kind of on the move and you needed to do a search but it's really hard to type, you can do a voice search. Mm. So it's a very useful app if you're already using Google. Yeah. And that concludes all of our apps uh, that we wanted to talk about today. Uh, any, any last thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, these applications are all, uh, we've reviewed them and I think we both we all agree that these applications are useful for pedagogy as well as for, uh, you know, just personal use. Uh, but mainly, our uh, our goal here is to share with you the knowledge that we we've acquired over about a year now of uh, studying all these different applications. So we hope that this has been helpful. Um, and please let us know if you have any questions. Uh, I assume that there is an email contact that we can share with the folks. Yeah, uh, if you if you want to get any additional information on this, just contact ITS Help at Colgate.edu. Uh, and that the questions will get routed to the right people. Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing I want to mention about apps in general is that even though we kind of highlighted one for each one and sometimes two for every topic that we brought up, there are a variety of apps. And if you mm -hmm. don't like one thing in one, and there's another app that you would possibly right. uh, 
like. So for example, just in, in my note-taking folder, here's a variety of note-taking apps that I've looked at. I chose Notes Plus because of the vector graphics and the conversion to type text. Mm -hmm. It's something I liked. Um, just because not everyone understands my writing, but so far it's done a great job mm -hmm. like interpreting my stuff. Mm -hmm. So just keep in mind that, you know, Z mentioned a specific PDF reader. There are some free versions. There's some other paid versions. There are and many they all, of them, yeah. They all work, and they just, they kind of work better. Mm -hmm. Each one works better for a different person. Yeah, the one I mentioned is I've used it a lot, and I've used it to annotate over things and documents, and it worked very well for me. So, yeah, go ahead and try them out. Usually most of these applications have a free version. Uh, out there so you can demo it. Um, so we recommend just go ahead and try it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, not talking about apps now, we just wanted to point out that uh, I think you saw when we were talking about the note, one of the note-taking apps that we had a stylus. Um, so there are a variety of peripherals that you can buy uh, that can kind of enhance your iPad experience. So for example, this is a uh, HDMI connector, so it'll it'll project the video from your iPad right onto any HDMI capable screen. There's a VGA one that some some people are using around campus. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, just like that PowerPoint was built on this screen, there are other PowerPoint presentation apps, so you can present right from your iPad. And it's much lighter to carry an iPad than a full full computer. So a lot of people like things like that. The stylus helps if you're going to be trying to write notes instead of trying to write with your finger. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's touch sensitive rubber on the top, so you can be very precise with it. Yeah, um, and it's just kind of the, a comfort feel of writing with a pen as opposed to with your, your index finger, whichever finger mm. you, uh, you choose to write with. There, there are other attachments, um, like camera attachments that you plug in that let you connect your, uh, your it's camera. It's called a camera connection kit. It costs about $30. It looks very similar to this, and it basically gives, it gives you an SD card connection, and there's a version that gives you a USB connection, which is really, See, the $30 really dollars gets you both. Oh, okay, it, it great. It comes as a set. Yeah, yeah. So you can connect your camera to it and download all your pictures. So if you're using iPhoto on your iPad, there you go. You just freed up the memory card on your... Uh, on your camera. The other thing that Z kind of found out was uh, with the USB version. We've talked yeah, about so that. Yeah, so what I ended up doing was I uh, connected my USB uh, con adapter to my iPad and then I connected a powered USB hub to that USB adapter. And through that U powered USB hub, I was able to connect any number of USB devices to my iPad, such as my, uh, my headset, for example, my MIDI controller. USB controller, uh, any number of USB devices that drain power that would otherwise uh, not be um, compatible with the iPad are compatible if you have a powered USB hub with a proper adapter for your iPad. And it works wonderfully. Yeah, so I mean, and there's, there's, a, there's a lot more uh, peripherals out there that you can uh, look at. So if you have any questions, email ITS help, and someone will get back to you. Thank you. Thank you.